Actress Kristen Stewart appeared on the cover of Rolling Stone and obviously that ruined conservatives day. Maybe it's not obvious to you, sorry, maybe you're new to American politics. Let's figure out why they're freaking out. Uh, first, we're gonna show you the image. Uh, this is the cover that angered them so much. It's uh, Kristen Stewart and you can see the, 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 the quote there uh, by Rolling Stone is that she wants to do quote, the gayest thing you've ever seen in your life. After more than two decades in the spotlight, she knows who she is and what she wants. And so uh, what I, I assume they're alluding to is that that's the photo shoot that she wants to do. She's done all sorts of different photo shoots with different photographers, different stylists, but this is what she wants to do, so she's doing it. And uh, you can see a few more photos from the photo shoot there. Uh, she talks about being a queer woman in the public eye. So this is her uh, living her life, this is who she is. And when given the opportunity to have a profile in a magazine, this is what she wants. And that just seems like, okay, that seems fine. I don't see why that would ruin your life, but let's figure out why it perhaps should, because a lot of people are triggered about it. Chris Rufo, uh, the dude who basically invented out of whole cloth the idea that CRT is a thing that happens outside of academic circles, says queer is an ideology, not a sexuality, and it appears to make people miserable. They put dismal pictures of Ellen Page dead naming Page there, and Kristen Stewart under headlines with words like joy, family, happiness, propaganda that intends to demoralize. His tweet isn't intended to demoralize anyone. His effort to like root out of public schools anyone with uh, you know a sexuality that's even marginally different from his own, that's not intended to demoralize or anything. And he's totally for joy. The fact that this makes Kristen Stewart happy is irrelevant. She's not like a human with agency that can make her own choices unless those choices align with exactly what Chris Rufo would have her choose. Then it's acceptable. But even in that case, she should really shut up about it. Uh, Ali London says that Rolling Stone is pushing queer and non-binary ideology. Again, communism is an ideology, okay? There's there's a lot of ideologies out there. It's like a, a way of thinking and conceptualizing the economy or politics or art or something. This is just who she is. And I'm sorry that you find that uncomfortable, particularly the fact that in one of those photos, she's making a crotch grabbing motion. Uh, that's what Ollie London references in that tweet. If only you people had had a problem with crotches being grabbed when it was your god emperor who was going around Hollywood doing it. But anyway, she talks about being a queer woman, blah, blah, blah. Libs of TikTok says it's disgusting. Because what could be more disgusting than someone being who they are? Like maybe the photo turns you on, maybe it doesn't. Okay. I don't know why that has to become like a political issue for everyone. But according to the right, it does. Trey, what do you think? Oh man, uh, I don't know. It's wild to me that they're surprised by you know Rolling Stone pushing these kind of boundaries or whatever, or being like, you know, not exactly arch conservative as a publication. It's like I'm sure I, I can't think of one, but I'm sure there was plenty of Rolling Stone covers in like the '70s and '80s that, in retrospect, were far gayer than whatever Kristen Stewart is doing right now. You know <laughs> what I mean? But back then, people didn't even admit that like Liberace was gay, so you know that didn't count. But there's been plenty of things for them to get upset about. You know what I mean? Like the you know the church crowd across America. I mean, in the '90s, they had like a bunch of heroin addicts with socks on their wainers on the cover of uh, of Rolling Stone. Talk about Red Hot Chili Peppers. They've all they're in recovery. They're doing better now. But anyway. <laughs> you know, they've always had things like this and and not really cared too much for the 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 pushback on it. That's part of what they've tried to do is like push push various mm -hmm. envelopes and things of that nature. They just grasping for straws for anything to get mad about. And yes, that that tweet, the their ongoing uh, um, immunity to irony, man, just gets me all the time. That hate riddled tweet with the dead naming and everything ending with. Whatever he said, it was like these people acting like they experience joy and happiness is all just an, an attempt to demoralize us. It's like these people finally feeling like they can be openly yeah. themselves and are happy about it. Really, the whole purpose of that is just to upset your mammal, right? And everybody yeah. else in her <laughs> church group. And it has nothing to do with who they are as a person or like yeah. you said, their agency or anything. So it's just completely ridiculous, um, but also, you know, pretty well tracks with most yeah, of what and, they well, And they've made it a, a thing now that your Mima can't just read Rolling Stone, which she was totally doing beforehand. Um, right. None of this, none of this makes any sense. They're, 
they're busybodies. They're like they they have political goals, but their tweets are never about those goals. Their tweets are about politics, but never about what they actually want to achieve. What they want to achieve is to get right wingers in power to pass economic policies that benefit them and the corporations that they represent. That's what Chris Rufo cares about. But he knows that they can't win a single election by focusing on that stuff saying, "Oh, we just want there to be no taxes on the wealthy." They can't say that. So instead, they talk about Kristen Stewart, they attack, okay? That's what they do. Also, they seem to genuinely think that if you are different from them, you should not exist. At the very least, you cannot exist in public. That is what this is. They used to be like, we're against gay marriage. That act is sacred, so we're against that because of something, something Bible. We are so far past that, you cannot exist. As a gay person, as a queer person, as a trans person, whatever, you simply cannot. They do not, at the very least, you cannot exist in public. You can't be on the cover of a magazine, you can't be in a movie, you can't appear. You need to be hidden away from society. It is an open call for segregation that they feel totally freed up to pursue in advance, again, of the tax policies that they truly care about. They're just, God damn, do they get involved in people's life? And all of it is about, the person just, Kristen Stewart is not coming and trying to seduce your partner. Kristen Stewart isn't doing anything about you. See, we get mad when they attack us, when they try to take away our rights, when they try to stop us from living. They get mad when we live. Like just the fact that a person is out there being queer ruins their day. And that is super weird to me that people live their life that way. Or that if people wanna live uh, live their life that way, that that's their politics, that they would generate an audience. They're talking about right. joy and family mm -hmm. and happiness. They worship Donald Trump and Elon Musk. Are there more joyless people in the world? You think Donald Trump gives a damn about his family? You think he's happy right now? Like literally, Donald Trump is somewhere in the world right now. Do you think he's experiencing joy right now with the life that he's set up for himself? Nowhere near what Kristen Stewart is clearly experiencing. She had the photo shoot of her dreams, okay? She's actually happy. Anyway, anything, any other thoughts before we move uh, on? These people just infuriate Like me. you said, it didn't feel like they used to be quite so hardcore about it. And I continue to be kind of incredulous at how it's supposed to be a viable long-term political strategy for them to continue to more and more narrowly define the demographic of person they're okay with existing. Do you know what I mean? Like they just keep finding out and then uh, targeting more and more types of people as being wrong or immoral or they yeah. don't want to rant. You know, it's like it that you, unless you are a like straight, white, not poor Christian, you know, American or whatever, then they don't. Want anything to do with you, and they managed to have some some tokens for some other groups here and there that they can point to and use as like an excuse to keep saying their hateful yeah. stuff. But I don't understand how, in an increasingly diverse country like this one, I don't understand how that's supposed to work out long term, uh, electorally speaking. But of course, they're working on that because they're trying to suppress the rights of these other types of people yep. to vote in the first place, and so that's how they're trying to to get around that. But yeah, it's uh, and of. I do feel like they didn't used to be so openly hateful, and that's true. But I feel like also part of that is because, like, not even that long, like just when we were kids, you know, like they probably wouldn't put a commercial on TV with a with an interracial couple eating cereal at the dinner table or something like that together. Like they just didn't used to do that in this country because they were like, oh, that'll make people mad, right? Mm -hmm. And but because they didn't have to see it ever. They also didn't have to expose how hateful and racist and everything that they always were. And then yeah. as more and more people, you know, pushed for their rights and came out openly in the public eye, now they have to see it. They're reminded that other types of people exist and they can't hold back how fervently upset and disgusted that makes them. Yeah. Right? So I don't think That's they're that much different than they used to be. It's just a different context and they just can't hold it in anymore. I think that you are 100% right. I think that is an accurate read. I just, I will, I will close by saying I think it is ironic that there are people out there that have been trained to be so sensitive that merely a couple existing and eating Cheerios, but being races that they don't want them to be ruins their day, and that that person is angry at Gen Z for getting triggered about everything. Right. Oh yeah. I don't think Gen Z is triggered by the fact that like there's a couple out there that they don't think should exist. <laughs> 
Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.